I've never seen a yacht like this in my dreams Sailing the seas in boats so grand, it seems But we're just humble sailors Salt upon our cheeks Go classic every day of the week Hey everybody, welcome back to Boat Fool Sailing. Thanks for tuning in last year and thanks for watching this year. It's the early days of January 2024 and we really appreciate your continued support. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. Please click like, please uh, share, please submit a comment on where you'd like us to go next. Uh, and if you're feeling really generous, consider becoming a Patreon. You can get on board with us for as low as $3 a month and we greatly appreciate the support. Now, like I said, it's early January. We're in Maine, it is cold, it is miserable. So we're going to the West Coast. We're going to where the sun is shining, people are sailing, people are happy. We're going to SoCal in particular, and we're going to look at boats from Santa Barbara on south, boats that are listed for $40,000 or less, and we're looking at boats that were built uh, by 1984 or more recently, because insuring a boat that is 40 years old or newer is gonna be a lot easier, and we're trying to break down the barriers to entry here, and you should be able to pick up insurance through one of the national agencies like Geico or Progressive in conjunction with a good boat survey and a sailing resume, uh, more readily than if it's an older boat. Now, there's some cool boats in Southern California. I've got family out in Carpentria. I love it out there in Carp. Uh, I love going to the spot for lunch and then kicking it on the beach for the afternoon. Now look, uh, this year is the year of the dragon, not the Dragon Force uh, 65. It is the year of the Wood Dragon, which is the symbol for prosperity and good fortune. So maybe this is the year you finally pursue your dream and get that boat you've been thinking about. So when you call up that shrink in Beverly Hills, yeah, you know the one, Doctor, everything's going to be all right. You tell them and you want to feel the salt on your skin, the sun on your face, and the wind in your hair, and you're going to get busy buying a boat or get busy dying before the Grim Reaper come knocking on your door. So let's go. Let's go crazy. Let's go have some fun. Let's go blast through these like a skateboarder down in Venice Beach. All right, ladies and gents, here we go. So obviously I'm flying solo today at the HQ, no wingman. Uh, so I'm going to introduce these boats in no particular order, but I am going to use the Boat Fool scorecard, which I'm going to post up here on your screen. All right, here's a quick explanation of our Boat Fool scorecard, okay? We have five categories, seamanship, affordability, comfort, usability, and is she pretty? And then we have a total column on the far right, 10 boats. Uh, you can score between one and five points for each column with half points in between. So you can get a 1.5 or a 3.5 or a 4.5, etc. What do we mean by seamanship? Seamanship, we mean the general maintenance of the boat. Does the current owner take good care of the boat? Is it clean, tidy, lines coiled, etc.? Affordability, is it a good value for the price? Uh, is it going to be expensive to maintain and run? So it's not just the price of the boat, it's the affordability of owning and running the boat. Comfort. Yeah, we look at the comfort ratio, sure, but that's sort of ethereal, right? So we also look at whether or not the cockpit is big, whether down below is nice and bright and airy and comfortable, uh, is the head usable and nice, uh, just the overall general comfort of the boat. And usability, what does that mean? Well, is it easy to use or do you need a crew of six to sail it or can you solo sail this thing? Is it quick to get on and off the mooring or the slip or does it take a lot of people to help you? Usability. Are you going to use it or is it going to be a drag to use it? Now, is she pretty? Always controversial because it's very subjective. Is it fun to look at? Do you love to look at your boat? Is she pretty? You total it up and the total points would equal 25 for a perfect boat. We've never found one. So you'll be in the teens or low 20s if you're lucky. So that's a quick look at the scorecard. Let's keep moving. Now, uh, at the end, I will rank them uh, from third place to first. And it'd be great if you guys did the same at home. So it'd be fun to get some feedback on what you think the top three boats are uh, and what your number one pick is. So. No surprise here, our first pick of the day is a Catalina 34. It says 35. Now look, uh, you can't swing a dead cat, uh, shall we say Catalina, without hitting a Catalina in California. Uh, Catalina was founded uh, in Hollywood by Frank Butler uh, and uh, back in the late 60s, 1969, I believe. Uh, they have since moved to Florida back in the mid-80s when they bought Morgan yachts, which all brings it back to Morgan and, and my boat. Um, and they were prolific. More than 80,000 Catalina boats have been made, and they're still being made. So these are good boats. If they were junk, they wouldn't have survived this long. These boats will take it anywhere. And this is a really nice example of their very successful 34. So let's take a look at the pictures. Uh, $35,000, 1987 built, um, located in San Diego. 
So she's a new arrival, so not a ton of information. But what we can discern is she looks to be in nice shape. Looks like original gel coat, nice roller furling with umbrella, uh, nice uh, double uh, galley sink here. The sole floor looks great. Uh, nav station off to port here. And uh, there is your galley with a nice gimbaled stove. And your companionway is nice and wide for easy ingress and uh, egress. And nice high combings here. And generally speaking, uh, here's your nav station, just looks to be in nice shape. New mattress in your uh, aft quarter berth here, uh, your aft cabin, as it were. Ship to shore power, uh, Dodger, Bimini, uh, covers for your wheels and uh, your wheel and your winches and your handrails. And you've got some, uh, what they say, uh, oh shit handrails here on your Dodger, which is fantastic. Uh, and again, just overall looks to be in nice shape. V berth. Uh, there's your gimbal stove with a toaster underneath. There's your main salon uh, set to you. This table drops. You got a nice cover for your mask so it's not cold to touch. And uh, your head looks clean and serviceable. Aft hung ladder for easy ingress and egress off the boat. And uh, a nice example of the 34. Uh, we don't know what the engine hours are on this, but we do know uh, there's a lot to like about it. It's a universal diesel. And she holds 72 gallons of water and 25 gallons of diesel and has a 30 gallon holding tank. All very nice. Let's look at the sailboat data on this. 19, uh, 1987 Catalina 34, not a 35. Uh, and here's your floor plan, which is, and your schematic, which is the exact boat we just looked at. Nice fin keel spade runner. Uh, length overall of 34 and a half feet. Length on the water of uh, nearly 30 at 29.83. Beam is nearly 12 feet, 11 and three quarters. So a nice roomy boat down below. Uh, fiberglass construction. I'll find out about the decks. I reckon they're cord. Uh, max draft of, uh, of just over five and a half feet at 5.58. 1,438 of these Frank Butler designed and built boats were made. That is unbelievable. There's going to be a great support network out on the World Wide Web. It says Universal Diesel. Uh, sail area displacement of 16.07. Nice stiff boat at 41.84. Uh, moderate displacement at 200. Uh, and a uh, comfort ratio of just over 22 at 22.22. .22. Capsizing screening of 2.06 and a speed S factor of 2.58. So those are very decent numbers. You could uh, race this, you could cruise this, uh, you could go a long way with this boat. It is an excellent, excellent boat and a great entry level boat and a great boat if you're downsizing or upgrading to a bigger boat. This is a great size, 34 feet, really 34 and a half is a really, really super size. So uh, she's our number one pick today. Our second pick today is a 1989 Ericsson 32-2, list price of 28900 located in Dana Point, California. Now, this is a really nice example of the Ericsson 32, and a bunch of these are around, and in fact, my buddy just put an offer on one uh, today over in Rhode Island, and its list price was 349. So this is 289, uh, so fairly comparable, but I would offer you know, in the low 20s for something like this. But this is a nice example. I did notice some weird uh, rub marks maybe on the coach roof that you might want to have looked at. I don't know if it's just the fiberglass wearing thin uh, or if there is some damage that was repaired. Either way, not a huge deal, but the uh, decks look nice. The hull looks great. It looks like original gel coat. You've got an older looking Dodger that looks a little bleached out, but looks serviceable. Uh, cover for your winches and helm station. And uh, there's your pulpit looking uh, down your hull there. Uh, here's your nav pod here. It looks like decent instruments. It looks like you've got uh, auto helm as well, which is great. Nice deep combings. Uh, nice bridge deck into your companionway. And uh, there are your engine instruments. There's your helm and steering station. You've got the uh, Ericsson hump, which is similar to the CNC. Um, really just a lot to like about this. Uh, there's your transom, bad monkey. I like that name. Aft uh, transom hung ladder, which is fantastic. Uh, nice grill. Uh, this thing's got everything. And here's your uh, chain locker, anchor locker, and all your lines are led aft. Now here's your down below, which looks neat and tidy. Kill step mass, which is nice. Uh, your V berth, this is a little unusual. Uh, your V berth is wide open. So you want to get a curtain uh, for the more modest of you and your head's going to be back uh, in your transom area. So nice big main salon, uh, nice table here that has a drop leaf in it, but all the woodwork, woodwork looks great. There is your quarter berth. Um, all this looks nice, gimbaled stove, uh, no refrigeration on this, but a nice box, uh, ice box, dual sink. Uh, there, are your, uh, there's your switchboard. Your electronics look decent. Your sole floor looks nice. All your cushions look great. There's another look at your table. That all looks very nice. 
and all I don't see any obvious staining under your opening ports which are up here and all of this looks great there's your v-birth again there's your companion way there is your head behind this door here's some discoloration in your sole floor which can be fixed but maybe find out if there's a source for that there's your head which is nice because it's facing fore and aft and uh, there is your diesel engine which looks like it's in relatively good shape and nice insulation in there uh, it's a universal and let's see if we can figure out the hours on that there's your bilge looks nice and dry and the nice thing about these Ericsson is this uh, coach roof ceiling uh, or roof uh, unzips so you can access um, through bolts and, and whatnot to replace winches or look for leaks, that sort of thing. It's really easy to disassemble, uh, which I really, really like. Uh, nice painted spar there, your uh, nice self-tailing winches. And let's see what we can find about this. Uh, recently uh, listed and 6.2 um, draft on this and very fast these are very fast boats and it's a universal and i don't know if it has the hours on this i thought it did but um oh yes here it is 1100 hours on that universal diesel so not bad if that's been well maintained that's really fantastic uh 25 uh, 25 horsepower direct drive and a bronze prop and let's uh, let's uh, a bunch of uh, instruments here that you can go through on your own time. But let's switch over to the sailboat date on this. All right, she is the 32-2. Here's your sail plan. Here's your schematic. There's your fin keel, uh, spade rudder, and here's your layout with the uh, head in your uh, aft section here, which is fantastic. Um, all right, length overall 32 and a half, uh, length on the water of nearly uh, 26 at 25.83, and a beam of nearly 11 feet at 10.83 and a draft of uh, just over six feet at 604. Bruce King design, Erickson built, a fiberglass hull. They are uh, cord decks, I believe. I will confirm and put that up. Uh, Universal, as we know, with uh, was 1,100 hours on that. 30 gallons of water, 22 gallons of diesel. And she's a fast boat, like we said, 17.39 for the sail area displacement. So she's going to do well in light air. Nice stiff boat at 42.86, uh, which is great. Uh, moderate displacement at 253. Comfort ratio of nearly 23 at 22.79. Capsizing screening of 2.03 and an S factor 2.17. So uh, you're going to smoke around the race course on this thing. This will be fun to race, fun to cruise, perfect size, 32 feet. I love this boat. Nice example of the Ericsson 32. She is our second pick of the day. All right, and at no surprise to anyone, our third pick of the day is the ever popular Catalina 36, 1986. Uh, located just north of San Diego and Harbor Island, list price of 37500 owner financing available, which is kind of nice, actually. You might want to check this out. So a ton of work has been done to this boat. Uh, it's reported to be in excellent condition, uh, and they say it's turnkey. Now, you know I raise an eyebrow and my hackles go up when someone says it's in excellent condition. It is reported to have only 700 hours on the engine, uh, so we'll take a look at that. But a lot of work has been done to this boat, especially uh, starting back in September of 2022. Uh, new batteries, all sorts of new stuff here. New fresh water pump, new macerator, new electric fuel pump, uh, new engine starter. So let's take a look at the pictures, shall we? Uh, the down below. This is where she shines. Looks very nice. All the cushions look great. All the woodwork looks nice. The galley looks clean. Uh, this is what we talk about, seamanship and maintenance of a boat. This is where this boat shines. Nice big companion way to get in and out of. And uh, I don't see any obvious standing on the wood. Nice big cockpit, high combing. So you got covers for your winches and your helm station. No bimini, uh, sorry, no dodger, no bimini. Uh, but that's something you can uh, add at a future date. It's not uh, crucial just nice to have if you're going to do cruising all your cushions look great there's your steering wheel uh and there's your quarter berth and the fabric all looks good opening ports back here in case you get claustrophobic nice big head shower uh wet head a newer looking toilet i love this the hull looks great all everything about this looks really kind of spectacular and here's your nav station good look at your sole floor is nice neat and clean uh, really a clean nice example of the really extraordinarily popular Catalina 36 this table drops got a nice workstation here if you want to bring your laptop TV stereo uh, it's got everything so let's look at the sailboat date on this all right here she is under sale a Catalina 36 here is your layout uh, similar to the one we just looked at and uh, a nice big fin keel, uh, skeg hung uh, rudder there, which is nice. Uh, length overall of just over 36 feet at 36.33. Uh, length on water of 30 and a quarter. Beam of nearly 12 feet of 11.92. 
and you've got a, a, a max draft of almost six feet at 5.8, five for the last construction. I'll find out about the decks. 1,766 of these Catalinas were made. 1,766. That is a lot, ladies and gentlemen. That is a ton of boats. That is amazing. There are a ton of these still sailing around and plying our seas. So uh, holds 25 gallons of diesel, 72 gallons of water. Uh, sail area displacement of 15.44. Ballast displacement of 44.44. Uh, moderate displacement of 217. Comfort ratio of nearly 24 at 2398. And capsizing strain of 2.01 and an S-Factor 2.36. Not great in light air, faster and heavy air this boat will go. This is a really cool example of the Catalina 36 and I would take a close look. And with that owner financing option, that is a real option. Uh, 37,500, I would say you might be able to get this for closer to 30. So take a close look, only 700 hours on that diesel. Uh, that is significant. All right, so let's keep moving. I'm really excited about our fourth pick of the day. It is the uh, 1984 Baba 30, built in Taiwan, uh, and uh, it's a Robert Perry design, list price of 32500 I just had a price drop of $1,000 back on December 7th, whoop de doo uh, but this is a really nice example of this really beautiful ocean cruising, ocean going boat. Uh, like I said, Robert Perry design, uh, let's take a look at the pictures. Um, you're going to be, there's a video we're not going to watch, but nice uh, single spreader mass. You got radar, roller furling, lazy jacks, and you've got a manual windlass up on your uh, bow there. Uh, the teak has been let to uh, go just, it's been let go just naturally, which is fine. Uh, you can do it if you want, or you can just let it go and gray out like this. Uh, nice canoe stern. It's really, really pretty. Uh, there's your helm station, nav pod. Electronics look serviceable. Nice high combings in this cockpit. Big uh, self-tailing primaries. You got a stack pack. There's your manual windlass. Uh, your teak all looks good. Obviously, have a surveyor take a look at this. Uh, you got some nice bulwarks on this. I love the looks of this boat. It is really, really pretty. It kind of reminds me of the Victoria 30, though a little bit nicer. Uh, there's another one of these for sale up in uh, the Seattle area that I think is listed for nearly 50. Uh, and uh, so these are these go for more. This is a really nice example of one too. Nice butterfly hatch here, I love this. The down below is off the charts, excuse the pun, beautiful. There's your V-berth and uh, here's your main salon, uh, Drop table with drop leaf, nice bronze ports. The cushions look great. Something happened to your uh, sides here in your ceiling and your coach uh, roof area in your nav station. It looks like something was taken off here, but uh, that's not a big deal. You can paint over there. There's your table down with the leaf open. Another look at your butterfly hatch. It's just really beautiful. Nice handrails here on the ceiling uh, to grab onto when you're underway. Head looks serviceable and clean. You've got a shower in there. Galley looks great. You can really tuck yourself in here. A nice two burner gimbal stove, uh, double sink. I believe you have refrigeration on this. I think, in fact, I know you do. The oven is spotless. Uh, there's your sink. I love everything about this. Yes, you've got refrigeration. Here's your engine. I believe it's low hours. We'll confirm that. But honestly, look at the craftsmanship on this. It is really extraordinary. I love this boat. Look at this locker. Oh, wow. Uh, here's your nav station. I love this. Looking back towards your helm, I really love this boat. I love everything about it. What can we learn about it? Uh, Built in Taiwan, as we know, uh, Robert Perry design, and a lot of stuff's been done to this, so I would take a look at this carefully, but this is an ocean cruising vessel. I would take this boat anywhere. Yes, uh, you've got re refrigeration, a um, bunch of electronics here, autopilot, and you've got a full batten mainsail, spinnaker, and a furling Genoa. Only 730 hours on your Yanmar diesel engine. It's 20 horsepower, 730 hours. So if that's been well maintained, this boat is bonkers at this price. I would go for, I would offer 25 and see if you get a steal. I love this boat. I love the pulpit, the bowsprit. I love everything about this, the roller furling, and it might even be cutter rigged. So uh, let's take a look at the sailboat data. Uh, it looks to be cutter rigged. So here's a picture of one under sail, really pretty. Um, Here's your schematics and your sail plan, cutter rig, canoe stern, full keel. Uh, your uh, rudder is hung off the back of your keel, so it's nice and protected. I love this. Uh, yeah, cutter rig, length overall of 29 and 3 quarters feet, length on the water of 24 and a half, beam of 10 and a quarter, and uh, max draft of only 4 and 3 quarters feet. That's amazing. Fiberglass uh, hull with uh, the wood uh, imprinted in there, the wood uh, look imprinted in there. Um, 
uh, find out about what's underneath the teak. It's probably cord, iron ballast in that encapsulated keel, which is great. 170 of these were made in Taiwan. Uh, it says Volvo, though ours is a Yanmar. 80 gallons of water she holds. That's significant for an ocean cruising, cruising boat at this size. And 35 gallons of diesel. That's fantastic for a 30-foot boat. Uh, sailor displacement, 1502. Nice stiff boat at 40. Ultra heavy displacement, 379. Comfort ratio of over 33. That's the first one in our list so far of over 30. Uh, that's sweet. Capsizing screening of 1.17, uh, 1.77, the S factor of 1.12. So not the fastest boat, especially in late air, but she'll go and she'll get you there safely. Beautiful boat. I love our fourth pick of the day. This is a stunner. I'm in love. All right, our fifth pick of the day is a 1987 Newport 30 Mark III, 30 feet long, list price of 24.9, lo uh, located in Long Beach, California. Now, why this boat? I think this boat would be a great starter boat. I think you can pick this up for under 20 based on the buyer's market that we're in right now, and you could have a blast with this boat. It's clean, it's turnkey, it's ready to go. You got some solar, you got a bimini, uh, you got covers for your winches and handrails, you've got a uh, sombrella on your roller furling, you've got a nice sail cover, and you've got a nice uh, bow roller for your anchor up here, which is fantastic. And generally speaking, it's just a nice size for that entry level boat. And uh, you've got a bimini, nice faux teak in your cockpit, which has nice high combings, steering wheel, auto helm, ship to shore power. Uh, I mean, this thing's got everything. Now, look, there's another one for sale uh, that's a 1984. And I know for a fact that underneath this carpeting is very little uh, wood flooring. It's maybe just over your uh, bilge covers, but it's generally fiberglass. So they put this rug down so you don't bite it when you come down with bare feet and the floor is wet uh, or with slippery shoes. But you got a nice dinette table here that folds down. Uh, all the woodwork in this boat looks really, really nice. The craftsmanship looks really good. Uh, nice gimbal stove, double sink. And uh, moving into the main salon, look at the craftsmanship of the glass windows in your cabinets. You've got some champagne here, or Prosecco. That's all aces, nice storage here. Uh, and this clearly goes into a double. There's a piece that fits in here. And it even comes with a little mood lighting here. And uh, I just love this. It does not have refrigeration or an ice box, so they bring a cooler. Now, that can be retrofitted in uh, if you plan on doing some longer cruising, but a cooler will be fine for overnighting uh, and weekend cruising. You got a TV. I don't see any staining on the wood. Everything looks really, really well kept. And looks like you could just hop on this boat and freaking go. Uh, there's your V-berth, and there's your head. All of it looks nice. And for a 30-foot boat, not bad. It looks like it's the original engine, and we'll see what we can find out in the notes below. Uh, let's see. It's been well-maintained, obviously, and it comes with uh, a partially battened mainsail with two reefing points in good condition, Genoa, which is 110% on roller furling, and a excellent condition north sails asymmetrical, asymmetrical chute. So you can cruise with that. You can race with this. Uh, let's see. Uh, it is the original engine, completely serviced in 2023, and uh, it had a new heat exchanger put in in 2022, and a bunch of other stuff done uh, in terms of your electronics back in 2020, and I'll let you read through those on your own time. But suffice to say, uh, it's an electric flush toilet, by the way, all new plumbing. Uh, this is a sweet little boat that's been well-maintained and loved. It is clear. So let's look at the sailboat date on this. All right, Newport 30-3, uh, fin keel, spade rudder. Here's your layout. You can sleep one, two, three, four, five in this comfortably, maybe six in the quarter berth. Um, and uh, length overall of exactly 30 feet and length on water of 26.5, beam of nearly 11 at 10.67, uh, draft of only 5.17, so you can get in some nice shallow waters. Uh, first built in 1984, fiberglass uh, hull, I'll find out about the uh, decks. Capital yachts, uh, Gary Mull design, uh, 70 gallons of water, not bad for uh, 30 feet, and 30 gallons of diesel, again, not bad. And sail area displacement of uh, almost 16 and a half, ballast displacement of nearly 31, uh, so reasonably stiff. Uh, she has a light to moderate displacement of 203, and comfort ratio is low uh, at 20.37. That's because uh, for a shorter waterline, uh, fin keel, and a fairly light boat. And capsize screening of just over 2 at 2.09, and an S factor 2.6. However, uh, relative to boats her size, she's going to be pretty quick and do fairly well in light air. So you could race this boat, especially with that chute, uh, and have some fun and do some coastal cruising. This is a cool boat. So she's our fifth pick of the day. Okay, coming in at number six, 
bear with me. Another Catalina, but this is a really cool Catalina. It is a 1989 Catalina 38, list price of 38,000. So our most expensive boat on the list, located in San Diego, California. Now, why this Catalina? This Catalina has one of the most beautiful hull shapes of any boat out there. Now, uh, I didn't say coach roof because uh, I'm not crazy about this coach roof. Catalina bought uh, the mold from Yankee uh, boats and Yankee 38 was an exquisite looking boat uh, with a different coach, sort of a more low prof profile look to it. This is a little bit higher up with bigger windows and ports, which I don't really care for. Nonetheless, the shape of this hull, I'm in love with. The tumble home on this is bar none. And I wish they had some better pictures of it. And I'll try to find some and post them up so you, for you can see uh, so you can see them. But it's really sort of an exquisite look and it's a throwback look and I love it. And this boat is actually a really nice example of the Catalina 38. And it's 1989. So it's relatively new compared to the rest of the boats on the list. But nice big cockpit, deep cockpit, nice helm station there. Uh, great uh, scuppers there. Nice high combings. You got covers for your winches. You don't have a Dodger or a Bimini. Uh, but you've got other things, uh, nice big primary winches, ship to shore power, uh, aft hung ladder. Uh, these pictures are dark. I apologize for that, but there are some brighter ones. Uh, all your cushions look great. This table drops to fold into a double. You got a TV, nice storage with bookshelves here. And uh, you've got uh, a teak and holly floor in your galley and nav area, but then more fiberglass in the rest of the boat, which is easier to maintain. You got a gimbaled stove here um, and... There's your nav station, like all this looks nice. This wood looks like it needs to be uh, refinished, but that's no big deal. But the rest of the wood looks fantastic. I don't know if it comes with a Fender guitar or not, so don't ask. There's your V-berth, there's your head. Uh, there's looking back into your galley with that uh, the, the sole floor there that's wood. And then look at that companionway, it's so wide. Uh, it's easy to get it in and out of. You're not going to squeeze through that like uh, Winnie the Pooh getting stuck. Uh, you can zip right through that. And it's really a nice looking uh, down below. Uh, your bilge looks relatively dry. All the woodwork looks nice. There's your engine. We'll find out about the hours. But uh, again, you've, uh, I'm going to put some pictures up so you can see what I'm talking about with the tumble home because it's really, really, really impressive. So uh, it's a Sparkman and Stevens design, by the way, an s, &S design. And you got to love that. It's a 30 horsepower, a 35 horsepower diesel. And let's see if we know the hours on that. Uh, let's see. You got a 32 inch flat screen. Who cares? Uh, you got a Japs go ahead. That's nice. It comes with an eight foot West Marine dinghy with a 35, uh, 3.5 horsepower Mercury outboard. Uh, 1300 hours on that universal diesel. So not bad. If that's been maintained, that engine has got a lot of life left to give. So don't sweat that at all. So I love this boat. That's why the higher price, it's got low engine hours. It's 1989. You should be able to get this insured uh, lickety split. And not to mention, uh, you've got the exquisite hull design and I'm in love with this boat. So uh, she is number, uh, she's our sixth pick. So let's look at the sailboat data. So uh, Catalina 38, here she is under sail. Uh, just over 38 on the overall at 38.08, just over 38 uh, on the water at 30 and a quarter, nearly a 12 foot beam at 11.83, uh, 6.8 foot draft, fiberglass hull, I'll find about the decks, uh, last built in 1993, 365 of these were built, so it's a very successful boat, but low numbers compared to the rest of the Catalina lineup, but Generally speaking, for boats in general, that is a good run of production at 365. So uh, let's look at the sail area displacement of 16.28. Nice stiff boat at 43.08. Moderate displacement at 256. Comfort ratio of uh, nearly 30 at 28.07. A capsizing screen at 1.89. So you know what? Race this thing to Hawaii if you're crying out loud. This boat could go anywhere. S-factor, it's just over 2 at 2.04. 2.04. So nice fast boat. Uh, it's going to really go in a stiff breeze and it's going to hold up well to it. Uh, I love this boat. She is our sixth pick of the day. All right, you ready for this? Uh, the seventh pick of the day on the West Coast, no less, a 1984 Sabre 32 Tri Cabin. It's a new arrival to Yacht World. List price of 34.9. Just had a price drop of four grand back on December 22nd. So not bad. Located in San Diego, California. 
Uh, this is a really nice example of the tri cabin, and this boat is loaded with everything. It has a video we're not going to watch, uh, but the down below is really kind of spotless. A couple of uh, rough spots, but by and large, really, really pretty. The cushions all look great. Uh, here's your helm station. You've got an almost full enclosure here under your bimini with sides that drop down. You've got a nice folding table in your cockpit. All these cushions look great. I mean, this is really, really spectacular. Nice shiny derades. All your lines are left out to the cockpit. Uh, you've got a nice uh, larger uh, centerline sink, gimbal stove, toaster oven, coffee maker. Uh, the sole floor looks pretty good. Uh, the head looks nice. You got a oh wait, you got an opening hatch in your head. These ports are open too, so you get good ventilation there, which is always nice. Auto helm, uh, radar, uh, roller furling. And I believe you have lazy jacks and a stack pack, but there's your nearly full enclosure on that. That's really sweet to get out of the weather. All right, so here's the knock. Engine hours at nearly uh, 5,299, so nearly 5,300 hours on, I believe, the original Westerbeek diesel on this. So that's something that you're going to have to keep in mind. It looks here, you know, it's running at normal temperatures uh, and that sort of thing, but I would, uh, you know, I would have this closely looked at by a marine diesel mechanic uh, to find out if it's okay. Stirring hun. Stern hung ladder. It looks like the original gel coat because I can see some uh, oxidation in there. But uh, really, really pretty. The other one knock against it is the roller furling in the mass. I don't care for that particularly. If it gets jammed up, you're in trouble. Uh, you've got a windlass on your bow, which is great. Nice big CQR uh, anchor here. That looks more than enough to hold that boat. Uh, but again, the cockpit is beautiful. Everything about this is nice, clean, and tidy. You've got some speakers. You've got a stereo entertainment center. It uh, looks like you've got a nice uh, battery check on that. And the sole floor looks decent. There was one area of note uh, right here uh, that looks a little uh, rough that you could fix up in the galley. Uh, but otherwise... Uh, older radar uh, screen, but uh, everything else looks really kind of nice. Now, given that it's a buyer's market, I would shoot for mid twenties on this. Uh, maybe get it for uh, maybe get it for thirty. Uh, there's your uh, control for your windlass, and there you've got a uh, you know uh, what do you call it a safety kit here, and uh, with all your uh, first aid stuff, which is great. You get a wine rack. And uh, there's looking under your Dodger. This is all aftermarket uh, paneling because they probably switched out electronics at some point and covered up the old holes with that wood. But that's a nice look. Your V-berth looks spotless. Uh, hatches look great. Uh, there's a closer look at your windlass and your chain locker. So I love this. So uh, we know the high engine hours is a knock. The roller uh, furling mean, probably not a problem and probably pretty nice uh, to have. But uh Overall, a really, really nice boat. So let's look at the sailboat data on this. Uh, there is your sail plan. Here's your schematic. Uh, uh, fin keel, uh, partially protected rudder, um, uh, spade rudder there. And you've got a length overall of just over 32 feet at 32.17. A length on water of 26.17. A uh, beam of 10.33. And a max draft of nearly 6 feet at 5.58. Uh, fiberglass construction, I think the decks are uh, balsa cord, I'll find out. Uh, built by Sabre Yachts right here in Maine. Sail area displacement of 16.07. Uh, nice stiff boat at 39.05. Uh, moderate displacement at 261. Comfort ratio of nearly 26 at 25.87. Not bad. A capsize is going to be 1.89 and an S factor 1.98. So you could race, cruise, do anything on this boat. I really, really love this uh, sample. Uh, example of a Sabre 32 tri cabin. Eighth pick of the day is a bit of a flyer, so bear with me. So, if you're looking to do more of the racing thing than cruising, and you've got some Thursday nights to do some beer can racing, and you want to do some distance racing, uh, this might be the boat for you. This is a 1980s Elite 37, uh, listed at $36,000, listed about three weeks ago in Marina del Rey. Now, She's listed as a Curie uh, 37, but she's actually an Elite 37. That's how you'll find her on sailboat data. And she's a Ron Holland design manufactured by Curie in France. And it's a fast boat. And if you did any racing in the 80s and 90s, you know that, and maybe even the 2000s, that uh, CNC 40s are very fast boats. And this rates similarly in terms of its perf rating to a CNC 40. Her perf is about a 99 to a 117. So it's a fast boat. And uh, she's got a 12-foot beam, so she's actually very roomy. So taking a, look, taking a look at this boat, the hull looks to be in really great shape. Uh, it's got a lot of 
lines lying around the deck, which bothers me, and I don't know what's going on. But nonetheless, uh, it's uh, a really slick looking boat. The hull looks great. Uh, you even have like, sort of that CNC tow rail there. You've got a radar tower on the back. You've got roller furling and a uh, nice sail cover. And the down below looks nice and bright. And the reason why it looks nice and bright is because it's made out of elm wood instead of mahogany or teak. So it's a brighter wood and it adds to a nice light airy feeling down below. And these nice big ports, uh, windows rather, uh, allow in a nice amount of light. So it's nice light finish. The, uh, all the cushions look to be great. You got a nice double sink. Uh, here's your nav station. You got some electronics going on here. A lot of electronics, to be honest with you. And uh, all the wood and finish looks to be nice. Here's looking into your V-berth. Here's a nice locker with a port light in there. So you have some light. How nice is that? Sole floor looks great. Uh, you got a nice centerline table, drop leaf. Uh, this has uh, a blanket over it. So I don't know if that's hiding something or not. But the fabric on this side all looks to be great. Uh, nice step up into your V-berth. Uh, but generally speaking, it looks nice. There's your nav station. This is uh, looking into your head a little bit. There's that blanket I was talking about. I don't know if that's hiding some stains or whatnot, but uh, all the wood looks good. I don't see any obvious staining, um, but let's get uh, moving. Here's your quarter berth. All right, this has a cushion here to protect your head. You don't crank it when you walk in there and just absolutely knock yourself out. Hopefully one of these ports uh, over here opens to allow some air in there because uh, that looks a little tight. Now your head's a bit of a hot mess. You got some faux tiling going on here. Looks like you could refinish some things in here, but uh, the head looks serviceable. looks like it's a wet head uh, with a shower and uh, there's your shower uh, nozzle there and you got a little light coming in through that port. So that's nice, but uh, that's the one low point and we don't really learn anything about the diesel engine on this uh, other than it is diesel. And it looks like it was rigged for racing and you've got all your uh, labeled uh, halyards here all leading back to the cockpit, which uh, has some older teak in there. You've got some solar going on, and it is tiller steering, not a wheel. So if you're looking for a more responsive feel, you're going to get it. Uh, it comes with a life raft. I have no idea how old that is or if it's even uh, salvageable, but nice dodger on there. Uh, again, nice lines on this boat. Really, really pretty. So uh, as I mentioned, designed by Ron Holland, built in France, and it comes with a whole slew of sails. And let's look at the sailboat data on this. Um, so here she is uh, under sail here. And uh, there's your sail plan. Nice, big, deep, uh, fin keel, spade runner, uh, rudder. And here is the layout that we looked at with a quarter berth head and nice big salon here. But uh, let's see, length overall of just over 37 feet at 3708, length on the water of uh, 31.58, and a beam of over 12 feet at 1208. Nice, beamy, comfortable, big boat. Draft of nearly six feet at 5.92. Uh, fiberglass construction, we'll find out about the hull. Uh, first built in 1981, last built in 1987. So it's a good chance this was built around 1984. So we'll just go with that. Says it has a Volvo. Uh, I didn't say so in the description, but let's go with that. Um, 18 horsepower, 40 gallons of fuel, which is a lot, and 90 gallons of water, which is also a decent amount for this size boat. So not bad. So if you're looking to race to Hawaii, go for it. This would be a cool boat to do it on. Okay, sail area displacement of 18.68, uh, nice stiff boat at 40.83, uh, light displacement of one, uh, 181, and which explains why the comfort ratio is down around 21 and a half, uh, capsizing screening of 2.07, and a S factor of 3.15. So a very fast boat. Uh, this boat would tear up the race course and uh, will do light, do well in light air and hold up in a stiff breeze as well. I really like this boat. She was the eighth pick of the day. All right, so now the ninth pick of the day is a little bit of a flyer too. It's a 1984 uh, omnipresent Catalina 36 with a uh, price reduction down to $24,000 located in Oxnard, California, listed just a week ago. Now, this boat was just bought uh, four months ago as a fixer upper and the gentleman who's selling this bought a bigger boat and this one must go, but it might come with a slip. So uh, he's done a lot of work to the boat, which I'm not gonna go through here, but uh, a few highlights are a new macerator pump, new fuel fill hose, uh, new fuel lines to the engine, new exhaust, new uh, scupper in the, in the cockpit, new scuppers in the cockpit, uh, new uh, running rigging and in terms of your halyards and uh, the engine only has 90 hours on it, as he was told, and he's put about 20 on it, 20 hours on it, uh, running d new diesel through it, and he's uh, done some rebuilding uh, of it. So, the hull looks great. 
uh, you've got roller furling, you've got a uh, nice sail cover there. Uh, the sails were pulled off and cleaned. You've got a nice looking Dodger. Um, there's a look at your sails. Hard to tell what the condition is. You get the sail cover on them, but the deck looks nice. Uh, your cockpit cushions look great. Transom hung ladder grill. There is uh, your Dodger. Nice big primary self tailing winches. Uh, looks like you've got uh, ship to shore power here and uh, a couple dings in your coach roof, but that's typical for both this age. Your fuel locker needs to be redone to comply uh, with current uh, code. And uh, there's your emergency tiller. And here's looking at your cockpit. You've got all the helm. I don't know if it works, but uh, some older instruments for sure. Uh, but your down below is where it starts to shine, right? He put all new sole flooring in marine grade uh, plywood and uh, finished. And it really kind of looks nice. Here's your nav station. Here's your gimbaled stove and a nice double sink center line. Nice big uh, table here. And then a workstation here if you want to live on your boat, right? I mean, this is really kind of slick. You do... Uh, it appears needs some new cushions and even the ones that do exist have some older uh, sort of nappy uh, fabric on there. But you may like that. I don't know. But uh, it looks nice and bright down here. The head looks nice and clean and newer head toilet and new plumbing in there, I think. And there's your V-berth and looking back into the main living area, it looks nice, bright and happy. There's your diesel with reportedly only 90 hours on it, partially rebuilt and it's been running uh, like a charm according to the notes. There's your quarter berth. So I think uh, there's your newer radar, some older instruments. Uh, overall, not a bad deal. If you could get this for 20 or less, you're sitting on a really nice boat. And if everything checks out with a good survey, I think you could find yourself a steal. And if you're a DIY kind of sailor and you can do some work on this uh, and you can get a slip like the seller thinks he can get you, you'd be in good shape to do a little work on this, live on it while you're doing it, and really enjoy the heck out of this boat. So uh, let's look at the sailboat, Dan. We've already, we've already gone through one of these, but we'll just go through it quickly. So there's your layout, 36.33 uh, overall, 30 and a quarter on the water, nearly 12 feet on the beam at 11.92, uh, draft of 5.83, fiberglass construction, I'll find about the decks, 1,766 of these were made, unbelievable, holds 25 gallons of diesel, 72 gallons of water, 15.44 uh, sail area displacement, a uh, nice stiff boat at 44.44, uh, light to moderate displacement at 217, and a comfort ratio of nearly 24, capsizing screening of just over two, and an S factor of 2.36. So uh, not great in light air, but it's gonna be fast enough in heavy air. Nice uh, fin keel uh, and a skeg hung uh, rudder. I love this boat, and I think if you aren't averse to doing some work, this could be a real steal. All right, let's keep moving. Our last pick of the day is a 1985 Pearson 30-3. Uh, list price of $22,000, a new arrival located in Santa Barbara, California. So this is just on the market. And the reason I chose this boat is because it's like the perfect entry level boat. It is a nice, safe, comfortable, easy boat to sail. And this is a really nice example of one. So let's take a look. Uh, I've got a little rust uh, on your uh, transom chain plate there. So I'd have a look at that. You've got a, a nice, uh, bimini frame here. You got an aft uh, grill on your push pit there and just a nice clean example of the Pearson 30. And you've got a lot of uh, pictures here. So we're going to blaze to them. You've got lazy jacks, roller furling, uh, the bimini, as I mentioned. Uh, I don't believe you have a Dodger, but uh, you know, as long as you have the bimini, you'd be good to go. You got ship to shore power, uh, which is nice. You've got a nice nav pod at your helm station. You got a nice table in your cockpit, nice deep combings. Uh, that GPS looks serviceable. And uh, you might even, add, yeah, you've got auto helm on this and uh, transom on ladder, like I said, there's your grill and your engine, instrument cluster and instrument there. That's newer. The other instruments are a little bit older, but you're down below is where this boat really uh, starts to shine. Look at this fabric. All looks like it's been redone. Your sole floor looks nice. A little bit of staining here. I don't know what that is. Uh, you've got a table that drops down with a drop leaf. You've got a two burner alcohol stove here, a nice little nav station that folds away to make more room to get into your quarter berth and uh, kill uh, step mass, which is great. But down below is neat, tidy, clean. And there's your table down and uh, there's your quarter berth. And uh, again, there's your uh, main settee there. There's your nav station that folds away. There's your uh, quarter berth there. But overall, there's your bilge, nice and dry, at least it is for these pictures. Um, there it is again. All this looks great. Uh, VHF, 
and here are your battery banks underneath your quarter berth all covered up properly and uh, your fuel tank Here's looking at your transmission, your stuffing box, uh, your through hole there. That looks like your raw water intake, a nice bronze fitting there. This all looks great. Uh, so your engine compartment's underneath your companionway steps here, center line sink almost, and the engine access on this looks actually pretty great. Uh, air filter, uh, all that looks uh, accessible and uh, easy to maintain. And you can also get into it from under here as well. So uh, great access there and uh, i really like the looks of this and uh only 102 hours on that it looks like a yanmar um there's your control panel another look at your galley i really love this again so uh no refrigeration but a nice clean ice box and if you're looking to do uh, some day sailing like i said coastal cruising uh, this boat would be for you so there are a ton of pictures here. you got a stereo uh, here's your head nice and clean i uh, got a shower in there nice wet head perfect v berth all looks great and looking up into your bow, your chain locker, all that looks great. Uh, what's not to like about this? Uh, I really like this boat. And for that price of $22,000, I think you get it for eighteen five, dollars And you've got yourself a slick little boat. So uh, what can we learn about this? A lot of stuff to go through here. So we're not going to go through all of it, but you do have autopilot. You've got a bunch of electronics. You've got uh, several sales. You've got a 110% uh, Genoa. Uh, and a spare 130. You've got a uh, mainsail, lazy jack, sail cover in good condition. And it talks about your winches and your safety gear, your bimini, Yanmar. It is a Yanmar. Uh, traditional stuffing box. You might want to swap that out for a dripless one. Uh, but uh, again, only 100 hours on that diesel. Are you kidding me? That is amazing. So I love this boat. Uh, let's look at the sailboat data. Uh, she's the Pearson 30-3. Here she is under sail. Here's your floor plan, uh, which is the one we looked at here. And uh, a very simple layout, very clean lines. And length overall of 30.29, length on the water of 25.37. A beam of nearly 11 feet at 10.92. And a draft of only 4.33. So nice shallow draft. Uh, Bill Shaw designed Pearson Yachts. Uh, a really, really successful boat for them. And uh, Yanmar, yep. And she holds 22 gallons of diesel and has 40 gallons of water and a headroom of six and a quarter. So that's uh, that's pretty good. So if you're around six feet, this would be nice for you. Sail area displacement of 15.77 and uh, a ballast displacement of nearly 35 at 34.65. Uh, a moderate displacement of 276, comfort ratio of 24.08, not bad. And a cash size screen of 2.02 .02 and an S factor of 1.83. These are faster than those numbers would suggest. I know that because we race against them. Uh, really cool boat. She is our 10th pick of the day. And now I'm going to tally my scores and come back to you with our winners. All right, ladies and gents, I did some calculating. I did some counting. I used my fingers. I used a calculator. I used an abacus. And in the five categories of seamanship, affordability, comfort, usability, and is she pretty, came up with a tie for third place between... The 1987 Catalina 34 you see here in the 1984 Sabre Tri-Cabin. Now, either one of these boats would be a smoking deal if you can get it for the right price and they come with a clean survey. So, number three, uh, tie between the Catalina uh, 34, the 1987 Catalina 34, and the 1984 Sabre 32 at 19 and a half points. Now, coming in in second place with 20 and a half points points was the 1985 Pearson 30-3. I just think if you want an entry-level boat, this is the deal for you. Uh, of course, uh, that would require a clean survey, etc. But at $22,000, if you get it from under that, that is a smoking deal. Uh, so number two at 20 and a half points was the Pearson 30. All right, somebody kick it on the drums, kick it on the drums. Please, coming in at number one, you may have guessed it, the 1984 Baba 30 at $32,500 with a total score of 21. So we did not have a perfect boat at 25, but we came close at 21. I love this boat. She is a real beauty. Um, I love everything about it. If you want to do some cruising, you want to do some solo sailing, you want to take your partner and go around the world, maybe with a child or a pet, this boat is for you. I love it. Uh, solidly built. Uh, rugged blue water cruiser and I am just blown away she is hot 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 she is number one this week thanks for tuning in see you next week still enjoy the finer things we don't care the view is pretty good for me